Currently, in Destiny 2, we have six armor stat categories to tweak when we're building our character loadouts. These are Mobility, Resilience, Recovery, Discipline, Intellect, and Strength. Out of these categories, Resilience is one that often leads to some confusion about how much is actually worth running. On the surface level, Resilience gives you additional health, which seems to be useful, right? According to Mercury's Massive Breakdown Weapon Stats Spreadsheet, players have roughly 70 health and between 116 and 131 shield points depending on their resiliency tier. For example, tier 10 is 131, 7 would be 124, 5 is 121, and 0 would be 116. So our minimum total health pool is about 186 at 0 resilience, and our maximum is about 201 at 100 resilience. But the catch here is that weapons in Destiny often deal so much damage that they blow right through these extra shield points. So the goal of this video is to take a look at several common scenarios in PvP facing weapons that are frequently used and see how much resilience is actually worth running. One important thing to mention here is that just like all other stat categories, resilience level is always rounded down to the nearest multiple of 10. So 87 resilience would actually only be 80. The extra 7 doesn't do anything for you. I also tested each of the following weapons within their optimal range. Standing a little bit further back from the target could of course change some of these results. Okay, so the first weapon I wanted to cover is Thorn, which is probably the most convincing argument for caring about how much resilience you have. A combination of two headshots and one body shot will survive at 60 resilience but die at 50 or less. Two headshots with the Thorn perk active also barely survive at 60 resilience. Landing one headshot and two body shots with the Thorn perk will kill you even at 100 resilience. And standing in an empowering rift while also having the Thorn perk active Dealing one headshot and one body shot will kill at 90 resilience, but survive at 100. Adding the Hunter Helmet Foe Tracer to the mix, which buffs damage against low health targets, pushes that damage just enough so that it requires 70 resilience to survive the two headshots with a Thorn Perk. The next weapon I wanted to look at was Lay Monarch. Even at zero resilience, the fully charged shot won't kill you with a headshot. And if you add a damage buff like High Energy Fire or an Empowering Rift, even at 100 resilience, you can't survive. A fully charged body shot with a monarch in an empowering rift still can't kill you or really even get that close even at zero resilience. A high impact sniper in an empowering rift will barely survive at 50 resilience, while a high impact sniper with kill clip can't even survive at 100 resilience. Next up, let's look at some legendary hand cannons. Starting with the 180 RPM models, a combination of two headshots and two body shots will survive at 50 resilience, while three headshots and one body shot will kill even a 100 resilience guardian. 5 body shots kill at 50 resilience, but survives at 60. A 180 with 1 sack of rampage dealing 2 headshots and 2 body shots will kill even at 100 resilience, while dealing 1 headshot and 3 body shots will survive at 30 resilience. A 180 dealing 2 headshots and 1 body shot with kill clip kills even at 100 resilience, while 1 headshot and 2 body shots with kill clip can't even kill at 0 resilience. In an empowering rift, a normal 180 hand cannon will kill in 3 headshots at any resilience. Next, let's move on to the most popular hand cannon archetype, the 150s. Three headshots with a regular 150 RPM hand cannon kills even at 100 resilience. If you're only hitting body shots, it takes 5 whether you're at 0 or 100 resilience. Dealing two headshots and one body shot with one stack of rampage will survive at 80 resilience, while having one stack of multi-kill clip and dealing two headshots and one body shot will kill even at 100 resilience. And with kill clip active, dealing two headshots survives even with 0 resilience. A regular 150 in an empowering rift dealing 2 headshots and 1 body shot will kill even at 100 resilience, and a 150 in an empowering rift dealing 1 headshot and 2 body shots can't kill even at 0. Okay, so let's repeat the same test but this time on a 140 RPM hand cannon. 3 headshots of a regular 140 will kill even at 100 resilience as you'd expect, and if you're only hitting body shots it will kill a guardian with 10 resilience in 4 shots, otherwise it takes 5. One stack of rampage dealing two headshots and one body shot kills even at 100 resilience. And two headshots with kill clip kills at zero resilience and just barely survives at 10 resilience. In an empowering rift, two headshots and one body shot will kill even at 100 resilience. Okay, next up, let's cover the 110 RPM hand cannons. A regular 110 dealing three body shots survives even at zero resilience. Meanwhile, dealing one headshot and two body shots will kill at 50 resilience but survive at 60. Dealing two headshots with one stack of rampage will kill even at 100 resilience, which is the same story with multi kill clip. Regular kill clip dealing one headshot and one body shot will kill at 10 resilience, but survive at 20. And one headshot and one body shot in an empowering rift will survive even at zero resilience. Okay, finally with the hand cannons, I wanted to also test the last word. 
So the last word, hip firing 5 body shots will kill at 50 resilience, but survive at 60. And the last word, firing 1 headshot and 3 body shots can't kill even at 0 resilience. Also, while aiming down sights, landing 3 headshots and 1 body shot kills at 70 resilience, but survives at 80. But let's be honest, who's really aiming down sights with the last word these days? Okay, I think that covers the majority of the hand cannons that are commonly used. The results are similar with scout rifles, but they do deal a little bit less damage with body shots than hand cannons for some reason, and that can affect the combo of body shots and headshots for lethality. However, scout rifles are really underused in the current meta, and I don't think they are a compelling reason to go with specific resilience levels. So next up, I wanted to take a look at the Mountaintop, everyone's favorite special ammo rocket launcher. It deals 177 splash damage and 98 direct hit damage. So a direct hit will kill you even at 100 resilience, and the splash damage or sticky damage alone will never kill you even at 0 resilience. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was slug shotguns like the Chaperone. What we found while testing was that the damage ramps up so quickly that resilience really doesn't seem to matter much. Every once in a while you might be the perfect distance away with 100 resilience that you just barely survive, but I think that's such a rare occurrence that it's not really worth worrying about. Spread shotguns like the Fellowinter's Lie are a similar story. Individual pellets hit for around 22 damage, so there's a chance that having a super high resilience level maybe once in a while will save you if just one extra pellet misses compared to a low resilience, but I think the chances of this happening frequently are pretty slim and probably not worth specifically building around. Okay, so we've covered most of the damage sources now that deal large chunks of damage all at once like hand cannons and shotguns, and the next thing I wanted to take a look at are some of the weapon combos that fire a lot of bullets quickly like pulse rifles and auto rifles. I should make a note here that due to the fast firing nature of these weapons, even if you barely survive a specific combo of bullets that we're about to cover, it's pretty easy to get tagged up by one extra bullet, and so I don't think these tests are as compelling of a reason to spec into high resilience compared to something like the hand cannons that we covered earlier, where the time between shots is much larger and it may actually swing the outcome of a fight. So the next weapon I thought was interesting to cover was the Vigilance Wing. I knew this weapon was really strong, but I didn't realize just how ridiculously good it was until we started doing this testing. The Vigilance Wing dealing just 5 headshots and 5 body shots will kill all the way up to 90 resilience where it just barely survives. This result is pretty crazy to me because it means you can get a 2 burst optimal time to kill up to 90 resilience while only hitting a 50% headshot ratio. That's very forgiving for an optimal time to kill. Also dealing just 4 headshots and 6 body shots makes your target survive at 50 resilience. Maybe even crazier, standing in an empowering rift, Vigilance Wing will kill with just 10 body shots all the way up to 60 resilience where it just barely survives. If you're interested in some more Vigilance Wing testing, my friend Drewski recently made a great video covering this gun in depth in regards to the current sandbox and I think it's worth checking out. He goes over a lot of additional scenarios that you might find interesting. I'll put a link to it in the description. Next up, let's talk about some of the high impact pulses like the Cold Denial. When I first started testing the high impact pulses, I expected them to be among the stronger arguments for running high resilience, but that really didn't turn out to be the case here. Cold Denial dealing 6 headshots will kill even at 100 resilience, and if you drop that headshot combo down to 4 headshots and 2 body shots, it survives at just 10 resilience. Using the perk Headseeker and dealing damage in a pattern of body, head, head, body, head, head to maximize the damage output of the perk requires 80 resilience to survive. Next up, I wanted to look at the adaptive pulse rifles like Bygones. Dealing 6 headshots even at 0 resilience won't earn you a kill, but dealing 2 headshots with 7 body shots, in other words 2 headshots out of a full 3 burst, will kill at 60 resilience but survives at 70 resilience. On the flip side, if you have 1 stack of rampage, landing 6 headshots will always kill even at 100 resilience. And finally, I wanted to take a look at one of the most powerful archetypes in the game, the 600 RPM auto rifles. Dealing 8 headshots will kill even at 100 resilience. 7 headshots and 1 body shot will survive at 60 but get the kill at 50. 6 headshots and 3 body shots survive at 100 but gets the kill at 90. 5 headshots and 4 body shots survive at 50 but then get the kill at 40. And 4 headshots with 6 body shots survives at 80 and gets the kill at 70. If we add kill clip to the mix, the damage ramps up quite a bit. Just 6 headshots will kill even at 100 resilience and then dealing 5 headshots and 1 body shot survives at 50 but kills at 40. We also did a bit of testing with the Suros regime since the first half of the magazine only deals 24 damage instead of 26 like a normal 600 RPM auto rifle. Most notably, dealing 8 headshots with the first half of the magazine will survive at 60 resilience but kill at 50. Now, you could go on to do the same type of testing with other weapons like sidearms, submachine guns, and other auto rifle archetypes, but I don't really think it's worth spending a whole lot of time on that right now, especially for the reason that we mentioned earlier. 
Many of these weapon types spin up bullets so fast that the difference between barely living with a certain combination or dying doesn't really matter that much since it's easy to get one extra bullet out there to finish the job. I also wanted to briefly mention a point we talked about earlier. The other effect that resilience has is to slightly shorten the maximum kill distance of certain weapons. For example, a 150 RPM hand cannon normally deals about 68 damage per headshot, however if you're just barely beyond the effective range, this may drop down to a 66, 65, 64, and then all of a sudden you're getting into that territory where the maximum resilience might keep you alive. So sometimes this can force an extra hit to be required to get that kill, or maybe just change the headshot ratio of a certain situation. For example, a normal 2 headshot, 2 body shot combo might have to turn into a 3 headshot and 1 body shot requirement due to that extra meter or 2 of range and the higher resilience stat. It's something to keep in mind when you're building your character. On the flip side, just barely surviving one hand cannon shot might actually win you the fight. So with all of this data collected, what conclusions can we really start to draw here? I created a chart with all the conditions that survived a particular resilience level from this video. As you can see, 6 is the most common resilience level by a pretty wide margin and that also happens to include a few scenarios with Thorn, The Last Word, Vigilance Wing, and 600 RPM Auto Rifles, which are all very popular options right now, especially in modes like Trials of Osiris and Survival. There's also an important note to make here about class choice. Titans get a dual benefit from resilience since that also reduces their barricade timer cooldown, so I can see an argument for potentially pushing their resilience set up closer to 100. On Warlocks, it's a harder call to make since you really want to maximize your recovery first, since that also gives your rift back in addition to being overall helpful to get back into a fight. And on a hunter, you typically want at least 90 or 100 recovery, as well as very high mobility so you get your dodge back faster, so it's especially hard to spec into resilience without sacrificing some big losses elsewhere. So I guess my bottom line advice if I had to make a decision is to first think about which class you're on. If you're on Titan, having a resilience set of at least 60 is a no-brainer to me. On Warlock, and especially on Hunter, that becomes a bit of a tougher call. I think there's value in investing in 60 resilience, but going much higher doesn't make much sense to me because that also means that you're sacrificing some other more important categories. You also don't get much value from resilience levels between about 20 and 50, so I don't see many good reasons to spend points there if you're not going to at least hit 60 resilience. Keep in mind that when you're building your character, you also get that plus 2 on each stat when you fully masterwork your armor, so do your math and figure out what your totals are going to look like before you spend all of your mats on upgrading armor. If you enjoyed this video, I have a few more recommendations like it for you in just a minute. This type of testing takes a lot of time, so if you did enjoy it, a thumbs up rating is really appreciated. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss my next one. It always surprises me how many people watch my videos but haven't actually subscribed to the channel yet. I stream on Twitch every week and you can catch me live over at twitch.tv slash pattycakespc. I love answering your questions and chatting with you guys directly over there. We also tend to do free trials help on Friday nights for PC players. Be sure to also follow my Twitter and Instagram pages for highlight clips and discussions throughout the week. So if you like this video, I have a couple recommendations for similar ones on my channel. The first one is this video on top here, which is all about building your hunter to dodge faster with reduced cooldowns. This one tests a whole bunch of different weapons, exotics, and mods. The other one on the bottom is a build video using the Gnawing Hunger, which is an auto rifle I mentioned earlier that also utilizes Kill Clip in the Charge with Light mod High Energy Fire. This build absolutely shreds in the Crucible and it's definitely worth trying it if you haven't yet. So let me know what you think of the results of this testing down in the comments and how much resilience you tend to run on your characters. That's all for now, catch you guys next time.